10. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre delivered his second budget summary address. The Prime Minister's prudent fiscal management abilities in conjunction with the industrious policy implementation efforts by the technocrats resulted in a favorable economic outturn. I'm pleased to report that the government was able to stay within its budget ceiling and the economy performed much better than anticipated. The priority areas for the upcoming fiscal year include national security and public health care. 9. That the convention of this honorable house is that when the Prime when the Minister of Finance delivers the estimates, the leader, the leader of the opposition responds the day after. That has been the convention of this house, Mr. Speaker. Every member of parliament was provided with a copy of the draft estimates for 2023-2024 up to five days before the commencement of the debate. So to use the excuse that there is no speech available, it's actually, it's, it's the leader of the opposition is failing his duty to the people of St. Lucia. He's failing his duty to the taxpayers of St. Lucia. And I think it must be noted that these games we win with the people's finances must stop, Mr. Speaker. Eight. Seven. The semi-professionalization of football. People are very excited that for the first time in St. Lucia's history, uh, footballers will be paid uh, to play football. It's a step in the right direction and uh, I think our young people can benefit from knowing that they don't have to be on the blocks. They can come play some football and get some compensation and uh, of course eventually you would see uh, the physiotherapists, those who want to get involved in videography and the other aspects of sport entertainment could definitely benefit from that commercial activity. Six. St. Lucia welcomed the inaugural British Airways service from Guyana on March 27th. The new service from London Gatwick is the only non-stop flight between Guyana and the UK via St. Lucia. This flight between Guyana and St. Lucia would help a lot in building that bond, that Caribbean unity, that Caribbean togetherness. But it will also help us as we welcome visitors from Guyana. We need to start thinking about multi-destination marketing. So you can come to Guyana, stay in St. Lucia. You can come to St. Lucia and come over to Guyana with the ease that this, that this flight offers. Five. Officials of the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice and Empowerment and their counterparts from the United Nations World Food Program WFP continue to fine-tune protocols to improve the shock responsiveness of St. Lucia's social protection system. What we are doing here is to review protocols that we have developed that speaks to clear roles and responsibilities in terms of response, identify what those roles are, at what point, what do we do, how do we do it, so that again when you have uh, that response, it is already established. We have rehearsed it, we have practiced it, and we can run seamlessly with it. Four additional ground assets, including bicycles and motor vehicles, were officially handed over to the High Command of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. I pledged to give the police all the resources that the country's fiscal position can afford at the time. This will be used to assist us in our crime-fighting strategies. In as much as we are happy to have these to assist in our crime-fighting strategies, these can also be used, especially the truck, as in times of disaster. Three. So it is a good thing that we have RSS to assist us in what is happening now. Along with support from a contingent from the Regional Security System, the Police Powers Act, strengthens the hand of the police force to mount strategic operations to take immediate control of an area affected by escalated crime. We've now seen some level of normalcy, you know, in terms of business and before. To be honest, um, I've seen a lot of ranking, high-ranking officers, you know, walking on the streets. As I, I guess that has created a level of um, reassurance, a level of confidence, you know, for the general populace. Two. Our theme for this year will emanate from one of the pillars of our national youth policy and it states to empower young people and communities as agents of peaceful 
and safe national coexistence. A number of activities will be planned for communities in St. Lucia, including peace camps in partnership with Development Alternatives Inc., DIA, and the National Youth Council, NYC, funded by the United States Agency for International Development, USA. One. And farmers are being trained to optimize soil fertility and improve crop yields through a collaborative program between the Ministry of Agriculture and the United States Agency for International Development, USAID. Soil quality is directly linked to food quality and quantity.